Hi there, it's Ryan with DoHardMoney.com. One of the things I get asked a lot of real estate questions, and one of them is, how can I buy a home that has code violations? First off, let's talk about what is a code violation. A code violation is basically when the house itself doesn't meet up with some of the ordinances typically that the city has in place. I'll give you a few examples of this. One example would be that it has an old beat up truck sitting there and it's not on the driveway or it's sitting on the grass or the grass is too high or um, the property isn't landscaped. Um, lots of times like even with a new construction, the house has to be landscaped within a year of the time that somebody moves into it. And if not, that would be a code violation meaning that the property is not meeting the terms of the city ordinances. Now there's all different code violations. It could be because um, there's an infestation with like uh, cats or something like that could be a code violation. There's all kinds of code violations, but basically it's not meeting the terms of what the city is requiring the property to be up for. Well, here's what happens. The city drives by or a neighbor complains and says, hey, there's a problem with this property. They send out a code enforcement officer that takes a look at the property and then they send a notice to the the owner saying, hey, this property does not meet a certain code. They typically give you a chance or a, to remedy the situation by fixing it, by cutting the grass, moving the car, taking the, the tires that are sitting on the side of the street or the trash that's piling up and getting that removed and getting it taken care of. If you don't do that, then you get what's called a violation notice. Now with that violation notice, they can actually fine you and they can say, hey, you know what? We're gonna send you a fine and we're gonna keep fining you. Typically that fine is a per day fine, meaning they fine you every every single day until it's taken care of. And that can get really expensive. Now, let's say the fine happens and nobody ends up uh, paying the fine or fixing it, because they're really not, well, the city's in it for the money, don't get me wrong, but they really want to get it remedied as well. So then what happens is it goes to what's called an administrative court or an administrative judge. Now, this is gonna be different area by area, but this gives you an overall idea. At that administrative judge, they're basically forcing you to come in and fining you, and if you don't show up, then they can actually put a lien against the property and start the foreclosure process. They usually don't start the foreclosure process, but they can get fines to be pretty excessive. So what typically happens is a homeowner shows up at that meeting and pleads their case and says, here's the reasons why. Now, as a real estate investor, if you wanna buy a house that has a code violation, the best thing you can do is show up to that zoning court or that zo code violation court. Um, basically, it's an administrative judge. You can sit there, it's public. So first off, the code violations are all public. So you can go down to your city and say, I wanna list the code violations. Now I'm going to warn you now, you're going to have to talk to a hundred people. So people are going to say, what are you talking about? What do you know? How do you get it? You know, it's going to be different for every city. I can't tell you the specific. You're going to have to go do some digging, but you'll find it. Secondly is um, you can get the dates and times of when the code violation court is in order and you can sit sit in the court and actually listen. And what you're going to do is sit there and you're going to listen to the case and, and the uh, district attorney guy is going to say, hey, here's all the reasons why. This is what we found. Here's the pictures. And then a homeowner is going to stand up and say, here's all the reasons why. How do I know this? Because I've been to court. Um, I had a zoning violation because one of my tenants didn't take care of the property. They claimed to have sent me a notice. I never got the notice and they wanted to find me $100 a day per incidence. There was five incidences, which means it would be $500 per day. And this went on for a couple of months. So this was a ridiculous amount of money. Well, I went and fought and talked about it and everything else. But that's when I realized, hey, there's an opportunity here. Because a lot of people um, could be landlords, could be a homeowner. They may not have the money to fix the problem. They may not want to fix the problem. And so you can sit back there and listen. And then as people walk out, you can say, hey, I saw the case. I was wondering if you've been interested in selling your property. Here's my card. Here's my information. You can also just get a list of these from the city um, itself and say, I want a list of any code violations that are happening. So there's some pros and cons with code violations. Uh, one of the pros are you're probably getting a property that can be improved, meaning that you can do value add. Value add means you're adding some things to the property, which can increase the value to the property. So that can be really good. The bad thing is, is you're on the city's list, which means the city knows this property's in need of repair and the city can come after you again and again until that gets done. And lots of times what happens with the city is once they know there's a problem with the property, they are going to make sure everything comes up to modern day code, where in most cases you only have to improve what you're improving to modern day code. If everything else, so basically if the electrical system was at code in the 
80s, they typically don't ask you, hey, you've got to bring it up to the code for the 2020s. You can leave it as long as it met the code in the 80s. But when you deal with a zoning violation, they could come in and say, hey, you've got to bring something up to a current code. So just be aware of that. So if you're buying a zoning violation, make sure you get with the city and say, what are your expectations of this property? So I can make sure that we're on the same page so we don't run into any problems. So it's a great way. I highly recommend that you look at some zoning violations. It's a great way to find properties other people don't know, haven't seen and don't know what to do with them to get them early on where you can get some value at, especially in a market like now where everybody's scrambling to find good deals. This is a way you can create good deals and help solve problems for people. So hope this was helpful. Check us out at dohardmoney.com and make it a very profitable day.